What's up guys, today I'm gonna show you how I designed this PCB board which is an Arduino shield to program at Mega and at Tiny microcontrollers which is very handy because I don't have to drop them on a breadboard and do all the wiring and then connect each wire on the Arduino Uno to program them. So now I just uh, put the microcontroller in place, put this on top of the Arduino Uno and then burn the bootloader or upload a new program and we are done. So this is really handy, really cool. I'm gonna show you how I did this. You can design and order your own PCBs on the link below. You can even order 10 of them for $2 plus shipping, which is awesome, it's a ridiculous price. So I'll leave the links in the description. So I'll show you how I did mine and let's get started. This time we have the box with LCSC, which is a store for the electronic components from the same people of JLC PCB. Wait a second, you don't know how I designed this board. Okay, let's go back and see how I designed it. It was actually very simple. I just took a template from the community of an Arduino shield and then started my design from there. I was following all the wiring from the Arduino website and then that was pretty much it. I just added a couple of LEDs, one to know when the board is powered and the other one is to debug and see if the program is running correctly. So for instance, I can upload a blink sketch and then see if the LED blinks and that's it. By the way, I'm using ECDA to design this PCB, which is from the same creators of JLC PCB and LCSC, so we're talking about the same people, same thing. This software is very cool, it's free, it has a big community, so for me it works really fine. Let's talk about the logo, this metal finish logo, which is from my main channel. I know this channel is called Create an Event, but I own a channel called Joy Plans RC in Spanish. If you want to check it out, I'll leave the link in the description. So to make this logo, you just upload a PNG image and then assign it to the solder mask layer. So that way it will render like that. And to finish off, we can fill it with copper, which is recommendable for like scientific reasons and stuff, but you can leave it like that. It is not a problem. So let's go back to the unboxing. I have my PCBs and also some electronic components that I will need to finish this project. And this works very simple. You finish and order your thing in JLC PCB and then go to LCSC to select all the components you need and buy them. And then you can select this option that says I want to combine PCB orders to ship together and that way you don't have to pay double shipping because it is the same people so you'll get everything in the same box. I found that LCSC is good to buy like simple and most common uh, electronic components. But if you want more complex and very detailed uh, electronic components then you will have to buy them somewhere else. So here we have our PCBs. This time I ordered five of them. Uh, you can order up to 10 of them for the same price, $2, which is amazing. And then we are going to start doing this. By the way, I have reviewed the quality of these PCBs before because I've done a lot of orders from them and the quality is always the same and I don't have to doubt anything from them. So I'll start soldering the components. I combined some SMD with through hole components like the capacitors our SMD, there is a 10 microfarad capacitor which is through hole and then resistors, all the resistors are through hole as well. But it's because I have a lot of resistors at home, I don't want to buy more uh, resistors SMD. So anyways, as you can see we're not going to use a lot of components, we're just using few capacitors, resistors, LEDs and a crystal which is the bare minimum for an Arduino to work. So if you look at the Arduino website, I will leave the link in the description below, you will see that the Atmega 328P in order to work for has a standalone Arduino in a breadboard, you will need a 60 MHz crystal, few resistors and capacitors, and that's it. As I stated in the beginning of this video, I'm not a professional, so this is just a hobby, this is just to have fun. And don't worry, this is not the space shuttle, so no one's going to die if one of the components disolder itself. So let's fast forward all of these techniques and let's go for the real deal, which is know if the board is going to do its job or not. We 
we're almost there. Let's solder the pin headers. The 10 microfarad capacitor is something optional for the Atheini microchips, but for the Atmega 328P it's not necessary at all. So I put solder pads to complete the circuit with the capacitor when we need it, and that way we can solder or desolder some tin on it. I know people will suggest to put pin headers and then jumpers to activate or deactivate it, but I forgot about it, so I'll do it for the next design. I will use some alcohol to get rid of the excess flux from the soldering stage and then we're ready to connect the shield for the first time and start programming. Now you have to be very gentle when plugging the chip on the socket because this chip needs a little bit of force to be plugged in and you have to be careful with the legs because they are very fragile and they can bend and even break. So what I do is I straighten them a little bit before plugging it and then very gently and with a lot of patience plug the chip in place. And now we're ready to start, so we have to program the Arduino to be a programmer. And to do that, don't connect the shield yet and connect the Arduino to the computer. Open the Arduino IDE and then go to File, Examples and then Arduino ISP and then upload it to your Arduino. After that we connect the shield and I'm ready to program an Atmega 328P. I'm going to follow the instructions from the Arduino website. As you can see the power LED is working fine and let's see how the rest of the board is working. As I said, we're going to use the Arduino as a programmer, that's why we loaded the ISP sketch. Now we have to tweak some settings in the Arduino IDE according to the chip we're programming. Because we're going to program the Atmega 328P, which is used in many Arduino boards, we can select any of those Arduino boards and then make sure it says Atmega 328P. In my case, I'm using the Arduino Nano. It doesn't matter if it's another board, just make sure it says Atmega 328P. Then, in the Programmer settings, select Arduino as ISP. This is very important, otherwise you will have some compiling errors. Then make sure that the correct COM port is selected. Then we're going to Tools and Burn Bootloader. After that we can upload our first sketch to the microcontroller. In this case I'm going to upload the blend sketch. This is a very simple sketch and we will know if the program uploaded correctly by blinking the LED that we have assigned to that. To upload a program to the microcontroller we have to do it a little bit different. We go to sketch and then upload using programmer. Or we can hold shift and then click on the usual button to upload a program. You will see that it says upload using programmer instead of upload. If you don't do this, then you will program the Arduino that we're using as a programmer at the moment. So I hit upload and it uploaded correctly, but there is a problem, the LED is not blinking. So that means that there is a problem with the PCB. So I started troubleshooting this and I found out that the pin 10 is connected to ground, which is crazy. So I took a look at the PCB design in the software and I found out that I made a mistake. I connected the reset pin of the Atmega 328P to ground because I thought it was ground at some point and I left it like that. Anyways, so I had to do a correction manually and of course the design is now working but I already have 5 PCBs with that mistake and after a manual but very bad looking correction of the PCBs I managed to get it working. So now everything works just fine. So after programming the Atmega 328P, I program a NAT 85 and also a NAT 85 with a SOIC package which is a very small chip. For this one I have to hold the chip against the PCB to make contact with the pads. This is not the best way, but that's what I thought in the beginning. The best way is to use the special socket for that, but that will be for the next version of this. And finally I want to show you the homemade version of this PCB, which I use to program any Atani microchips. It works just fine, but it doesn't look as good as the professional made PCB. 
And one small tip for beginners that uses the Admega 328 and similar chips to get it out of the socket is to be very patient and use a screwdriver or something similar to use it as a lever and get it out straight without bending the legs. And that's pretty much it for this project and I hope you like it and it is helpful for you. If you like this video, I hope you show your love by subscribing and clicking the bell button. And maybe even the like button, who knows. I'll see you in the next project.